Until Friday on the Savage Nation. Remember when Bush was in power, and I was an early and consistent critic of Bush. In fact, I called him a fiscal socialist a year before people realized what he was doing to this country. Do you remember when there were organized protests in Congress by groups such as Code Pink and all the leftists who would break up meetings and go into Congress? Do you remember how the media would laud them? Do you remember how the media would make them into heroes? Well, now that non-organized protests are occurring, now that ordinary Americans are standing up to the gangsters who have hijacked America, the vermin in the media are calling them things such as Nazis. They're claiming that they are uh, organized by conservative think tanks. They are saying that they're organized by anti-tax Tea Party sympathizers. They say they're organized by the insurance companies. And so, as I've told you before, there has long been a government media complex in the United States of America. Right now, the government media complex, 99.9% .9 of which is Bolshevik or, or Leninist or Marxist, whichever you prefer, all three would apply. They are calling you, the average American who are finally standing up to these people, meaning your fraudulent gangster congressman or senator who is trying to rob you of everything your children will make. They First, they nationalized the banks. Then they gave money to their friends on Wall Street. Hank Paulson, for example, robbed hundreds of billions of dollars in top funds, in my opinion, and gave them to his friends on Wall Street, much of which is not accounted for. There's no disclosure of where the money went. Many of the people on Wall Street who bankrupted America have now profited from the bankruptcy. They then nationalized the automobile industry, destroying one of America's greatest corporations, General Motors. They are now trying to nationalize health care in America and make it government medicine. And the people have said enough is enough. You're not going to do it. And what do their friends in the media, the low-paid D students known as journalists, do? They call them rowdy. They call them Nazi. They call them fascists for standing up to the true fascists in the United States of America. So understand what's going on in this country and understand what your battle really is and what you have to do. For example, uh, in California, the radical leftists are holding uh, meetings and uh, the protesters are going there and they're screaming, this is America. What's wrong with profit? And the leftist uh, representatives are saying, oh my God, we've never seen anything like this. So the Democrat National Committee, the DNC, calls the protesters mobs. They ask Democrats to make lists of people who are showing up at the meetings. They make Democrats, they ask Democrats to, to, to write down anything that occurs on the internet or on talk radio, I imagine, and make notes of the individuals who are disseminating the truth so that they can then be possibly visited by an acorn thug with a club somewhere down the line when Obama gets his private personal security force that answers only to him. Right? 1-800-449-8255 is the Savage Nation. MichaelSavage.com is the website. And speaking of which, we've linked up uh, some amazing stories on the website today. Let me point out one of them right now because it's so good. I have to download it. It's a little slow. You know, we got 1.4 million uh, uh, viewers a month on MichaelSavage.com. And that represents about 8% of my uh, uh, weekly but I get about 8 to 10 million weekly listeners on the Savage Nation, third largest show in the country, and the website gets about 1.4 million viewers a month. So it's a significant audience. So on the, on the right side of the website, I hope it's still up. I hope it hasn't been removed. I, I can't download it. There's a picture of Al Franken uh, in the place of a horse's behind representing the word obotomy or obotomize, which I coined yesterday on the show. I, I think it was hilarious that the Democrats would take this failed comedian and use him to introduce Judge Sotomayor. Uh, as she was uh, anointed to the Supreme Court. I thought it was hilarious. It was a double insult. First, they pick an unqualified woman and put her on the Supreme Court simply because she, she was Hispanic and a woman. And I say that with absolute clarity and no fear for one reason. Because none of you listening to this show can cite one legal paper written by Sotomayor that you can uh, remember. She has not written anything that will ever be remembered in the history of the law. And yet she was pushed forward into the so onto the Supreme Court the same way Obama was, even though he has no distinguishing marks in his career. He's never written anything anyone could cite, anything anybody could remember. He was unknown. Again, pushed forward basically uh, for reasons other than qualifications. In other words, so we have an affirmative action president. Now we have an affirmative action Supreme Court justice. So what's actually going on in the United States of America? There is an article from the American Thinker linked up on michaelsavage.com about Obama, and it is entitled... 
uh, something very interesting. Obama, a modern-day Roman plebeian tyrant written by a Dr. Frank Rosenblum, M MD. And he says, many comparisons have been made between the Roman Empire and the United States. The Roman Empire was the most powerful civil civilization on Earth. Similarly, the United States for now is the sole remaining superpower. However, with the good comes the bad, and the decline and fall of the Roman Empire has been compared to the decline and pending fall of the United States. We often forget the fact that the Roman Empire was preceded for 450 years by the Roman Republic, which arose in 509 BC with the overthrow of the Roman monarchy. So for 450 years, there was a Roman Republic. Now, how old is the American Republic? Do you, know, you have any idea? Well, I'll go on. Of course, there's an interesting correlation with the American Revolution, which also overthrew government by monarchy. Rome was structured around a strong constitution, though little of it was written down. The early years of the Republic were marked by political power held by a strong aristocracy descended from earlier royalty. In a series of events very similar to developments in our own country, the Republic devolved into rule by a series of popularly elected political elites who circumvented the Constitution for political purposes. Shall I read on? The Roman Constitution, we read, was a powerful code designed with a complex system of checks and balances and served as a model for our own Constitution. But it eventually was dissolved by professional politicians. And he explains how it was done. And then he talks about plebeians taking over. Many of you know what plebeians are. If you had a reasonable college or high school education, you know what a plebeian is. Uh, then we read around 200 BC, there was an economic crisis similar to the one we are experiencing today. The plebeians, especially farmers, found themselves unable to afford their homes and they demanded a bailout from the government. When the Senate refused, an uprising occurred, resulting in increased power for the popularly elected plebeian council. The country was then essentially controlled by new plebeian political elites, who were, however, mostly concerned with their own power and not about the problems of the people who elected them. Does that sound familiar to you? As common plebeians fell further into debt, unemployment rose and farmers could no longer sell their produce, resulting in widespread bankruptcy. People began voting for politicians who promised bailouts. Populist leaders emerged to promise change. The final decades of the Roman Republic saw an eerily familiar increase in the dependence of the average Roman citizen on their government, along with tax increases to pay for government programs. The Republic had slowly devolved into a democracy wherein people voted themselves benefits they had not earned. Sound familiar? Now, I'll continue with this brief article on the Savage Nation in a moment. But I want to remind you of something that's very important for you to know. 85% of the American people are covered by health care. Are you aware of the fact that any illegal alien can go into an emergency room in this country and get gold-plated medical treatment for free right now? So who is it, in fact, who is not covered? Who is it that Obama and Feinstein and Boxer and Reed are so anxious to cover? And why are we supposed to pay for health care for people who are not even citizens? Why should we pay for their health care and their children's health care? Why? The answer is we should not. And that, my friends, is why there is anger emerging at the town hall meetings. We know we're being robbed blind by these Bolsheviks, and we're not going to take it anymore. I'll be right back. Hey, I'm